I uploaded a video the other day about bards. The point of that video was to explain my opinion about it and what I wish was different about the class. Most of my points included bards not being unique enough for the standard of 5th edition, and bards core identity being misinterpreted by the majority of D&D players. I sought to change those things by introducing my own homebrew. It included new spells, a feat which upgraded counter charm, and a subclass solidifying the identity of an inspiring leader which I had assumed the bard's core identity to be. I did this to make the class have a more defined role by making it more unique and powerful. A lot of you disagreed with me, which I didn't expect. Not to say that I don't expect to be disagreed with, that happens all the time. I didn't expect the majority of the comments to break down my logic and provide a compelling argument against it. At first I was upset, but now after reading a lot of the comments, you all certainly had a point. I'd like to address some of those points and update how I feel about the class, video, and move forward with this criticism. Which, by the way, is not a bad thing. I need you all to keep me in check, and if not, then I'm being ignorant and stupid, and I need to be more open-minded and better about articulating my points on this platform. I'm going to be paraphrasing a lot of the comments I received, otherwise this video would be very long and a lot of work to make. I won't be directly quoting them because a lot of the comments share the same ideas. Hence, the point of this video. In this video, I talk about cantrips and spells. I say that bards only get four unique spells, and I think it would be more interesting if they had unique cantrips instead of taking vicious mockery all the time. I also took the liberty to show four commonly used cantrips to illustrate my point that cantrips are important, because wow, look at how recognizable these cantrips are. First of all, that's not even a cantrip. I meant to put sacred flame. Second of all, this is complete hypocrisy. I start by saying bards need more cantrips to be unique, and then I show how common all the other cantrips are. Druidcraft, Primal Savagery, Produce Flame, and Shillelagh are the only druid cantrips. Sacred Flame, Thaumaturgy, and Word of Radiance are cleric only. Eldritch Blast is Warlock only, and Vicious Mockery is the only unique bard cantrip. Druid and Cleric are outliers for having not one, but three to four unique cantrips. Bard and Warlock having a single unique cantrip alone makes them more unique than every other class. So the point that bards are less unique for having only one unique cantrip is just wrong. I'll get to my point about leveled spells later when I talk about their core purpose. I go further to compare the bard to other classes, saying, Rogues, Paladins, and Warlocks are rewarded for playing their role, and the bard gets nothing for playing their role. Which I then go on to explain their role. Bards don't get much for being entertainers, performers, inspirers, or just charismatic. That's their role, past Jacob. I mentioned that Bard wasn't even a class in first edition. It was a subclass of Rogue. It was actually a prestige class, which requirements included levels in Fighter, Thief, and Druid. To paraphrase and quote an excerpt from Wikipedia, Bards in 1st edition AD&D were a special class unavailable for initial character creation. A character could only become a bard after meeting specific and difficult requirements, achieving levels in multiple character classes, becoming a bard only later. Bards gained a limited number of druid spells and could be any alignment that was neutral on at least one axis. Because of the nature of dual classing in AD&D, bards had the combined abilities of both fighters and thieves. In addition to their newly acquired lore, all level dependent druidic abilities, additional languages known, a special ability to know legendary information about magic items they may encounter, and a percentage chance to automatically charm any creature that hears the bard's magical music. Because bards have the first acquired levels as fighter and thief, they are most powerful at first level than any other class. This version of the bard is a druidic lore master more than a wandering minstrel and entertainer, though the bard does have song and poetic powers as well. I honestly found this fascinating, and it really shows how well Wizards did with the 5e Bard. It keeps to the original Bard having spells from a bunch of classes and abilities mixed from Fighter and Thief. I kinda want to do this research with all the classes and make videos about their origins. Let me know if you guys would like that. In any case, my information on 1st edition wasn't necessarily wrong, just very misinformed and incorrect. A few comments were saying that because I articulated such a strange argument that it was difficult to tell where I was coming from. This made me sound disingenuous and that I was suffering from favorite class syndrome and just wanted my experience with bards to be stronger when they were already fine. I was fixing something that wasn't broken. I'd like to say that this video came from a place of misunderstanding. I spoke about a topic I thought I knew a lot about and I clearly didn't. Bard is my favorite class, yes, but I don't wish it to be any more powerful than the other classes. I hear all of 
of the people who said that they play bards for the roleplay and not for the power dynamic. And even then, many people were quick to express how powerful bards can be and that I was probably building them wrong. My point was not to make bards more powerful, though I understand how it may have come off like that. My point was to articulate that the bard's core identity was dumb because all the other classes can do what they do. And there was no reason to play a bard because you could accomplish what they accomplish with another class. I walked directly into the point of what a bard is without even realizing it. That is exactly what bards are supposed to be. They are the tricksters of the D&D classes. They are literally the jack of all trades. They are the absurds of the classes. They only get four unique spells because all of their other spells are from other classes. And no other class gets the ability to do this. Wizard and druid spells and they can fight? It's an amazing concept that's articulated perfectly through its abilities in 5th edition. Bards can use inspiration to help their allies because maybe they know how to fight, or how that spell works, or that skill they're using. It's like being an inspiring know-it-all. Song of Rest is great because it's a unique ability that no one else gets, but everyone still kind of gets. Everyone can heal on a short rest, but the bard can help with that. It's the best of both worlds. Magical Secrets allows bards to have two spells from any class. That combination alone makes them unique. Counter Charm still sucks ass and no one will convince me otherwise. Jack of all trades on top of expertise hones this in even further by allowing the bard's skills to be all of them. They know how to do everything. That's the whole point. I honestly have never had the experience of playing a bard and feeling powerful, but that's not the point at all behind this class. Because you're not a cleric and you're far from a barbarian. You take all the classes and you mix them into one. I now see exactly what this class is supposed to be and why what I was saying was frankly quite ridiculous. I'm not regretting writing any of this homebrew though. I think it could still be fun for bard characters. If anything, now I want to make different ones for all the classes. I want to thank everyone for responding to this video and making me think critically about my words and opinions. A lot of people who like the video may be thinking that I'm giving in to all the criticism. I'd like to say that I'm not. I've truly been convinced that my ideas were just wrong and I was being stupid. Not because the majority of people said it. One person could have made this argument and I would have agreed. A lot of the arguments that came from you guys made sense. A really big fear of mine is that I'm not what I used to be. That my older videos were a lot funnier and smarter and more thought out. But that is a good fear to have because I want to be my best. I'm happy that all of you are willing to call me out on being a big dum-dum. I will try to be better for the future. This is helpful for me. I've got nothing else to say. Have fun in your D&D games. Thanks for watching this video. And thank you for being here. Sometimes I still can't believe that this is what I do. That's the end of the video.